Joe here. So now it is time to get the controller wired and that's exactly what we're doing right here on the bench. So you can see here is the box and I went ahead and put a couple things in place. Uh, my friend Eric is, uh, we're looking around, we're kind of placing things now, some of like the ground bus and stuff like that. And yeah, so now it comes time to get the wires in place, get our heat sink sunk up there, you know, we've got it painted of course, so we've got the, uh, whoop, little bit of cable there. <laughs> but yeah, so it, this is how it goes, all kinds of parts and bits and bobs, and then, end goal of course, being able to brew darn good beer with an electric setup. I think we are pretty close, and this is going to be so cool, so, all right, here we go. YouTube. Okay, so we're back with Eric here. Hello. We've been wiring for a little while, and uh, yeah, Eric's going to talk us through a little bit about what we've done and uh, what else we got to do. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here on the box, and uh, so you can see what we're talking about. And um, yeah, here we go. All right, so here's our input. Um, Joe can pan down to his board. This is where yep, everything's going to so live. That's going to be the board. This is a uh, spa panel. Um, it's a lot better to get them this way if you can because. This part will usually cost you about $110 or something like that. This whole thing will cost you about $60 with that part already in it. So get a spa panel. It's a GFI 220 volt breaker. It's exactly what you need. So this is what we're going to be feeding this off of. Um, and this is the board. It's all going to go on. We can yep, show you that when it's finished. Now, but, yep. Um, so this wire, this big, this is number 10 by 3 stranded. It's what you'd use for a stove or a whirlpool, you know, hot tub, anything like that. Um, so it's a heavy duty stuff. This is what's going to feed into here. So that comes in. Um, we, you saw us drilling some of the out uh, holes and everything. You saw us drilling this chassis. We've got things mounted in it now. I'm going to flip it up and show you here. Um, you can hear some pieces sliding. We didn't take them all out. So. The input goes right to this. Again, this is a big uh, switch. It looks like a light switch, but it's actually an electric motor switch. It's rated up to 600 volts. It's great. Just uh, This is one way you can do it. People do it other ways with a relay and a small toggle like this. Uh, lots of things you can do with it. I've done it. My electric controller that I've been using for three years is based off one of these. It's just a big light switch, and that's what handles it. So um, if you're not used to 220, if you're used to 110, Normally in 110, this would be hot, neutral, and ground, right? We're dealing with 223 wire here. Uh, those of you not in the U.S. are going to laugh at us because this is what you <laughs> deal with craziness. every day. This is yes. craziness. So this is hot, hot, and ground, and that's what we're dealing with. Um, we're doing a three wire. It's the older style. Um, modern will be four wire. They're yep. both fine. My house is from 1954, so I've got the three wire. Yes. Eric's house has a very different setup. He's got four wire. So. Yes. Um, so the difference is with a four wire, you can safely tap off a 110 leg from this and still be GFI protected and all this. Uh, any of you out there that are electricians or electrical engineers, you can completely comment and point me out as being wrong but um, and also the chance of any of that being a problem you could tap a 110 leg off this you would be fine but the code in the US is you're not supposed to tap 110 off this unless you have a four wire so you have both neutral and ground so that a GFI will work and you know save your life so anyway um, so what we're doing here this is what we got wired so far this is the input, the mains. I like to have a big main switch. Some guys run it off the breaker that we showed you in the box there. You can use the breaker as your mains. We have a nice switch here. This is an L gonna be a big 10 mil LED. We talked about that in the other one. Um, just using a half wave rectifier to run a big LED at different voltage off of the wall voltage, in this case 220, because we got the two hots. Um, we have our hot bus right here. This is where we're gonna take our two hots and split them off to everything that we have. Over here we have our three wire output, so this is going to actually go right to the kettle that's, from that's there. The big bomba job. Yep, right to the kettle there. Right. So, there. so what we got wired so far is the inputs to the bus. From the bus, we're going to wire right here to the PID. And again, if you're not familiar with the PID, they're pretty. They look uh, intimidating. They're pretty straightforward. It takes the AC wall voltage um, and that lights it up. You can set your temperatures and your curves and all these things. This one. Um, is designed to make sure you get the right one. This goes right to an SSR. 
which is abbreviation for a solid state relay. Which so this is a solid <laughs> state relay. Yes, here's where the magic happens, some of the magic. So what this does is um, on a big AC element like in a water heater or like an electric kettle, instead of turning the voltage down, which would be very you would take a lot of big resistors and big potentiometers and things that would be big and bleed off a lot of heat and whatever. So instead of dropping the amount of uh, energy going to it, you just switch it off and on at different intervals. It's pulse width modulation. If you've ever seen PWM as the abbreviation, um, a lot of guys now are doing it with their own microcontrollers, uh, Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, that kind of thing. You can do it with the PID and this. So what you do, this side is low voltage DC. It comes right out of the PID here into these two pins. And when this senses it needs to turn the element on, it uh, switches that on. That in turn switches it on internally. And this is the high voltage that goes to the element. It's gonna switch that on. And the amount of time, rather than changing the voltage, the amount of time that the element is on versus the amount of time it's off is what dictates how much energy you're actually putting into the element and heating your wort, your water, whatever you're doing. So. Um, this is where we are so far. Um, we're going to have a switch here. We have these two switches wired in. We haven't gotten to the 110 side yet. That's just going to be for the pump. Uh, we're going to run a separate 110 in here because of the fact that it's only three wire and we like to be safe. The other switch, what we're going to do is, even if the PID is running, we don't by default want it to have to turn the element on. So we're going to have a switch that switches this side, the DC low voltage side of the SSR off and on, so that even when the PID senses it needs uh, to turn the element on, when you're all ready and you have your wort or your water, you know, when you're ready to do it, then you flip this toggle and then it turns on. And then what you'll see um, that we did for indicators is this red LED right here, big giant, uh, it's a 10 millimeter, these are 10 mil LEDs. Uh, these are standard DC low voltage LEDs. You can get big, big LEDs that'll handle the 220 AC natively. Uh, I had some of these and the parts to make a half wave rectifier to run them. But so even if the PID says it needs to turn the element on, you have to flip that switch to actually make it turn on. And this will pulse with the element. You'll be able to see when it's off and when it's on. This is gonna be for the pump. That's just 110. Whenever Joe needs the pump on, he'll turn it on. And then we'll have another LED down here for the mains. So, blue for water. Blue for water, red for the element. Red for dead, uh, if you're familiar with uh, firearms. Red for dead. And, uh, we're not sure <laughs> what color the mains yeah, will be. We'll yeah, maybe out. green, maybe yeah, yellow. Right. I've got a whole bunch of LEDs here, so that's what we got. Rock on, man. All right, hey everybody, we're back. Um, we've made some progress on the wiring. Wanted to fill you in on a few things. So um, this is the PID controller. Um, we'll show you on the front later. You'll see it when it's in in uh, in process. But uh, we're hooking up the wall voltage to it, and then the SSR side. And here's where the sensor goes. It's got a diagram for it. There's three wires. Um, it comes to this jack, which we didn't show you before. On the outside, this is an XLR jack. If you're familiar with microphones, audio stuff, this is just a plain XLR jack. It's very handy for doing these type of connections. You can also use, um, what I'm going to use on my controller is an eighth inch stereo jack like you have on your phone, iPad, iPod, whatever. So that's wired up. Um, what we have wired up next that we're going to show you, this is the solid state relay. This is sort of the key to the whole temp control piece. And uh, if you don't know what a relay is, um, it's pretty simple. And we talked about it a little bit earlier, low voltage triggers on this side, and that makes this high voltage work. Um, the relay you're most familiar with is the starter in your car. When you turn the key, you can't fit a switch big enough to run your electric starter on your car motor from there, so you're just turning a relay that's actually turning over your car uh, electric starter motor. And that's what we're doing. This is actually called the solid state relay. There's also mechanical relays. You don't want to use a mechanical because it'll wear out. Um, a solid state, there's no moving parts inside of it, which is the benefit. But, um, so that's what we got wired up. And this SSR, uh, is wired to this PID. This PID is specifically designed to just have a DC output on these pins to trigger an SSR. There are a couple different kinds. We'll talk about those later when we're getting into more details of what you're looking at, those kinds of things for the PID. Um, so the, the next step that we're going to do, and one of the key things inside this besides the electricals we're talking about being safe, this is the back side of the solid state relay. It's metal, it's not electrified, but what you want to do with this, the only really thing you have to be concerned with these is keeping them cool. 
If they get hot, you're going to melt pieces. Your relay will go out if you can keep it nice and cool. Uh, it'll last a long time, millions and millions of times. You can you can switch your element off and on without any problems. So the way our chassis is set up here, and you'll see it later, but this is going to bolt up in here, and then this nice big heat sink is going to just bolt on top of the chassis and it's going to sink the heat from this solid state relay outside so it stays nice and cool no matter how much amperage is running through it so uh, that's what we're doing next and that's where we're at uh, we've wired up most of the switches uh, you can see this switch is wired up this switch is what's going to be turning the element off and on um, the the pit will turn it off and on but this is so that we can get the pit up and running without the element turning on right away this will actually make the electricity go to the element it switches the low voltage dc side of the solid state relay so that's what we're doing um, we haven't wired up the leds yet that's kind of a next step but that's where we're at and uh, we're just going to keep going here so uh, we're going to apply a little thermal grease. You won't see it when we're doing it, but just like when you're putting a, a heat sinking fan on your computer, we're going to put just a thin layer of thermal grease on both of these so that they uh, make up. You can see even in the light, a uh, small, you know, that it's not a perfectly smooth surface. Um, it's not super, super critical on these probably, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So we're just going to do that so that the uh, heat sinks right from the solid state relay through the chassis to this big heat sink and keeps this guy nice and cool no matter how much you brew and, uh, and what you're doing. So uh, we'll be back and show you when we're uh, a little further along. Ah, some delicious Czech pills we brewed up here. And I'm not sure if you can hear it in the background, but we've got a little bit of boil going on. And guess what? It's the controller. It is live. We're doing a little bit of a boil test here. Oh, it just powered off. Check that out. Off. And there's the on. And back to a boil. And we'll see if we can uh, get the controller when it turns off. So. We walked you through this when we were building it. So here's our mains. Um, this is the LED. This one's a little dim. I need to, to rework that circuit a little bit. But, so this turns everything on. Um, these labels are just, they're clear actually when you'll, Joe will show you later. These will be actually on the, oh, it just turned off. Um, so here's our PID, it's all powered up. Uh, this is what the temperature actually is. This is the temperature we're aiming for. This switch, what it does is we're switching off the output to the relay. So even if the PID think there, thinks there should be heat, we uh, have the ability to turn that off until we're all ready, we got water in the kettle, got everything rolling. So basically if you watch this, it will, and you can kind of hear it in the background, it's, okay, turned off and on, and there we go. Um, and it'll just keep doing that, and that lets you know when the element is on. It's actually a little tiny green LED right there too. Uh, I like big bright LEDs because if you're across the room, you can see what's going on. Um, we haven't done this one yet, but this is separate. This is a blue LED. When you turn it on, if uh, the pump is on, when you turn that, it's yep. a nice bright blue Powers LED. Powers that so. outlet right there on the yep. side. And this one is powering this outlet down here, the big, the big one that goes into yep. the beautiful spike brewing kettle. We've got the sensor mounted there for that, mm -hmm. of course. And a big old 550 watt um, ultra low watt density element in there. And this is just extra, you see all this cabling. Uh, oh, not, yeah, yeah. So this we're, is we're just a, a, little bit of a, a temp probe that I use. Um, in fact, so this is my controller. We're having to use this as a jumper because my outlet is a four prong and Joe's is a three. So I'm just turning my controller full on um, while we're doing this to just basically convert from a four wire to a three wire. Um, so this, we might do a, an episode on this to show you the simplest way you can do electrical. This is what I use, it works great. Um, this is what I'm moving to, and this is what we built for Joe. So but yeah, this all can come out of here. We were making sure that the temp readings were looking good, um, all those kinds of things. So, and if you watch it, it's this is the beauty of electric. It boils smoothly, everything works great. When the temp turns off, if you're having a boil over, oh, there it turned off and you can hear it up. Oh, it's just keeping it at a boil and that's how it works. We talked about it before, instead of altering the voltage. So if you turn it off, off, now it's off boil. And if you switch it back on, it's back up to a boil. Insto boil. Yes. I love that. So, <laughs> um, so what we're doing, yeah, instead of altering the voltage, trying to attenuate the voltage, it just turns it off and on. And uh, and it's the PID is pretty smart. It's learning how to keep a nice steady boil as it goes. There, turn it off, and there, turn it back on. We have it set at 210. We're still trying to dial in what the exact ideal temperature to keep a boil going is. Um, 212 obviously is boiling, 
but the sensor is slightly in a different place in the kettle. As I've learned on my setup over here, uh, you can have a really, really, really vigorous boil going, probably more so than you want. So we're trying to figure out what the ideal temp for setting uh, Joe's new controller is. But there it is, it's on the board. And as we talked about before, um, normally this will just go in the wall, but this cord from here, is going to go to a dryer outlet which goes down to the spa panel that we talked about and the spa panel is hardwired over to joe's controller and we got the main switch that we showed you yep, the, the heat switch the pump switch and the pid here's the big heat sink on top um, the relay needs and it's a little warm when i feel it with my hand the relay that turns the element off and on does generate some heat you want to keep it nice and cool um, and then the, uh, when this is on it means that that outlet down here um, the dryer outlet that goes to the element is on. And that's how it works. And it looks like it's working great. Yes. I'm so excited. Oh, and then there's the XLR. There's, we, were yep, there's about, the, we were talking yep. about that, but we haven't really showed it. That's the... the yep, the XLR, uh, uh, if you're familiar with microphone connections, like plugging in a microphone, it's a three pin, and that's what the sensor plugs into. That's how it gets to the PID, um, how it gets its readings. So, so there's, there you go. Oh yeah! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive. <laughs>